It is an enjoyable book, it's an informative book, it's an inspiring book, and it's also some of the scariest reading uh, I've ever read in my life. Well, we are living through some extraordinary times and seeing one of the greatest scientific efforts against an infectious disease, and that is the extraordinary development, production, and implementation of vaccines to prevent COVID-19. But I don't think that's our best yet. I think we have something in the past that even trumps that, and that is the eradication of smallpox. So today we are going to be looking at the book, Scourge, The Once and Future Threat of Smallpox by Jonathan Tucker. Uh, this is an eminently readable book. It is an enjoyable book, it's an informative book, it's an inspiring book, and it's also some of the scariest reading uh, I've ever read in my life. In this book, Jonathan Tucker takes us on a journey through time from the potential origins of smallpox uh, in the, some of the earliest civilizations. And we begin to see the efforts to control smallpox. And with that, we also have the efforts to weaponize smallpox. The book tells us quite a bit about the efforts of the Soviet Union, the USSR, to develop a biological weapon in the form of smallpox. Possibly the greatest disease really to ever hit the planet in its scope and severity and uh, human impact. So we can ask ourselves, what was smallpox? Well, smallpox was a viral disease. So it's caused by a virus, a virus called uh, variole, or the smallpox virus. And it is a very large virus. It's a virus that has DNA as its genome. And it caused a, an extremely severe disease characterized by small, you might call them blisters or raised areas, pox, so to speak, so smallpox. This disease was fairly easily spread from person to person by respiratory droplets, very much like uh, SARS-CoV-2 is spread from one person to another. And that virus then goes into the body, it circulates and ultimately emerges in the skin in the form of these uh, pustules, um, which are really raised lesions containing pus in the wild. Uh, the virus only infects humans. And so, in, early in the book, Jonathan Tucker tells us that what you need to sustain smallpox is a population that is large enough so that, one, you get people in close enough proximity to transmit the virus. Uh, another reason the population had to be large because those people that survive are uh, completely immune to reinfection. So we've, once a person is infected, they are either no longer able to be infected again, or they've died and thus are not able to be infected again. So in order for the virus to continue spreading from person to person, we need a constant influx of smallpox naive people so, you need a large population, you need a dense population. And that's what really started in the earliest civilizations. And uh, where that virus originally came from is certainly unknown, but when it became the human smallpox virus, it continued to infect people until uh, December of 19. 78, if I remember correctly, when the last person to be infected was. The eradication of smallpox was really formalized in the 20th century, but we can certainly say that it began long before we're even certain. It was 
in the 1700s when a woman named Lady Montague, uh, the wife of a British diplomat, uh, was in what is present-day Turkey, and she saw something quite interesting. She saw people taking smallpox lesions, these uh, varioli, these pustules that contain the pus of uh, the individual, and scraping that pus into the arms of healthy people. Well, of course, this sounds absolutely insane. Um, won't you just infect the person with smallpox? In the majority of cases, this process of variolation actually results in the development of immunity against smallpox. Uh, it does have a fatality rate to it, though, um, probably in the mid uh, single digits percentage. Many of us have heard the story of Jenner, how he took the lesions of milkmaid suffering uh, cowpox, a related virus, and uh, scraped it into little James Phipps, and he then tested to see if little James Phipps was indeed immune uh, to smallpox. And so what Jenner recognizes that these milkmaids tended not to get smallpox. Um, what they did get was a very mild uh, disease um, called cowpox that uh, didn't really cause any difficulties for them, as I understand it. And so he had the idea of, of course, well, instead of using the material from a person with smallpox to um, variolate a person, why don't I take material from these cowpox lesions and uh, scrape that in? Maybe that'll cause the immunity. And indeed it worked. And Tucker tells us about how uh, these vaccines were passed on year to year to year to year, basically through the arms of individuals. Person A would be scraped with the pus from person zero, and then person B would be scraped with the pus from, a per from person A, and so forth and so forth. And this continued in um, facilities for years and years and years. The book also tells us about the impact that smallpox has had during various wars, including the Revolutionary War. It talks about the impact that smallpox can have on populations that are smallpox naive and have not seen the uh, smallpox, such as the Native American populations, the uh, South American populations. Tucker does a great job showing us just how a virus can impact the uh, ability of a population to um, fight back against aggressors. He shows us very skillfully how a uh, fighting force can be uh, basically ground down um, by smallpox, and he describes for us some efforts, including the famous um, blanket at Fort Pitt, uh, and he shows us how people have tried to use smallpox as a weapon in the past. But my favorite part of the book, <laughs> uh, he describes the eradication efforts, that is, the efforts to rid smallpox from the entire planet. One thing about smallpox, as we already said, was that it only infects people. And this is contrary to other diseases where there is an animal reservoir, um, a species or species that um, a virus, a bacterium, whatever the infectious agent is, uh, will uh, survive in when it's not in humans. So. Um, that means all you really have to do, haha, ha, all you really have to do is to um, stop the chain of infections that has been going for thousands of years. And that is precisely what was done through the process of vaccination. And one individual that helped Tucker in the writing of this book, a great resource for Tucker, was a man named 
uh, Donald Henderson, or D.A. Henderson as he's commonly known. And Donald Henderson was the individual who ran the World Health Organization efforts to, ra to eradicate smallpox. So the information we get in this book is great. And again, Tucker is a very skillful writer. He makes all the information, including technical information, really quite um, understandable. Two amazing things that uh, Tucker tells us about are a couple innovations. Um, one is the famous bifurcated needle, which became the symbol of the eradication efforts. It seems amazing that a little piece of steel could make the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful uh, vaccination effort. But that little piece of steel was very responsible for the success. Uh, not solely responsible, of course, but it was a major contributor. So I think you'll really enjoy reading about that. Um, another effort uh, was freeze drying, the ability to take virus and freeze dry it so that it could be brought into areas that lacked refrigeration. And the last areas that um, contained smallpox were India and Africa. And so a lot of those regions were outside of uh, electricity. And therefore, we needed a vaccine that could be kept in the pockets of the vaccinators uh, instead of kept in cold refrigeration. Finally, there was a strategy surveillance containment. Um, we probably hear a lot about surveillance these days um, where people with COVID get called and uh, they are asked some questions. Well, that was really nothing compared to uh, the old school um, surveillance that uh, really used to happen that um, the epidemiologists really hail as um, being an incredible success, often called classic um, shoe leather epidemiology, as epidemiologists would wear out their shoes tracking people down and asking people in person um, where they were, etc., in order to track down an infectious agent. The idea was to track down cases and then to vaccinate those people around that case to basically create a ring around each infected individual or infected population. And uh, that is also credited with um, really contributing to the effort. Some mathematicians suggest that the ring vaccination um, really didn't work. Um, and frankly, I don't understand their work, so I really can't comment on that except to say that many people think ring vaccination was very successful. Certainly anecdotally, it looks very good, um, but others um, crunching the numbers a little harder are suggestive that it wasn't as effective as we once thought it was. Tucker also tells us about a really genuine paramilitary operation in India to vaccinate a religious leader by the name of Mohan Singh and his wife Lakshmi Singh. And those running the vaccination certainly wanted to respect people's individual rights, but um, here we had individuals that were the absolute key to vaccinating an area in uh, India. And so they decided to take the benefits to the broader society and indeed the globe itself. Um, and uh, basically discounted the individual rights of the individuals. It produces an extraordinary story. The response of Lakshmi Singh and her husband Mohan is absolutely priceless. And then Tucker, towards the end of the book, talks to us about the use of, um, or the potential use of smallpox. And this is without doubt the most frightening thing I've ever read. Uh, he describes for us the Soviet Union's effort to weaponize smallpox. It's a very interesting dichotomy the Soviets had while they were generating many, many doses of smallpox vaccine. They were going around to 
areas and collecting samples of smallpox to use as a weapon. So they found one in the 1970s in India, um, which they named India One. And uh, this apparently was the foundation for their smallpox weapon, which um, could be amplified using chicken eggs very rapidly in a matter of weeks and loaded on to weapons and Tucker even tells us if I remember this correctly uh, that um, ballistic, ballistic missiles were actually armed with smallpox on them uh, which is absolutely terrifying. The Soviet uh, biological weapons program um, head by, at least at one time, by Ken Alabakov, um, was incredibly sophisticated. Uh, they were able to do things that uh, really were beyond frightening, including creating effectively untraceable uh, biological weapons. So I cannot recommend more strongly Scourge the um, once in future threat of smallpox. Uh, it's an extraordinarily well-written book. It is an informative book. It is a frightening book. And it is enjoyable. Uh, though it discusses a disease that has taken billions of lives over the years. It is uh, an enjoyable book. And I think anyone, uh, really with any background, will be able to gain a lot from it. So that's my full-throated endorsement. And one of you will be earning a free copy. All you have to do is write a comment down in the bottom and I will ultimately select a single winner from the comments and that individual will receive a copy of Scourge, the once and future threat of smallpox. So, I hope you'll subscribe and come back to the channel. Thank you very much.